SCB's uh, news review where we look deeper into some of the top stories of the day. On this segment of the program, Russia says a draft peace agreement that was negotiated with Ukraine in 2022 could serve as a starting point for a new round of negotiations between the two countries. The Kremlin spokesman said any potential future talks would need to consider, quote, new realities echoing the Russian president's remarks on Thursday. Dmitry Peskov added a lot has changed since 2022, including what he said was the addition of four new regions to Russian territory. The draft document that was discussed in Istanbul in 2022 reportedly includes clauses demanding that Ukraine adopt a geopolitically neutral status and not join NATO, limit the size of its armed forces, and grant a special status to eastern Ukraine. Moscow, however, says there is no sign that Kiev is ready for peace talks. Well, joining us on this edition of the News Review, we have uh, radio host and journalist at CPR News, Don DeBar, who's joining us from Austin, New York. And we also have independent researcher and uh, author Greg Simons, who's joining us from Uppsala, Sweden. Let's start off with Mr. DeBar. Uh, I want to get your perspective on uh, the recent um, comments coming from Russia that this uh, previous draft peace ag uh, agreement that was negotiated back in 2022 could actually serve as a starting point for a new round of negotiations. Are you optimistic uh, about that? First, the first impression I have of this is, today is that Ukraine is going to give, whatever they call it, is going to have a hard time fighting to be able to negotiate. Because the last time they did that, and the, their representative uh, negotiated the treaty, when he got back home to Kiev, they killed him and called him a traitor. So there's that problem. Um, of course, there are the various efforts by states and others to negotiate some sort of a peace settlement with everyone but Russia, which is insane, of course. Obviously, political uh, for consumption at home, not anything that's going to be considered you know, on the global stage or that's going to be considered by Russia. There have been other agreements. In December of uh, 2022, uh, before the uh, special military operation, as, as Russia calls it, began, that phase of war began, um, there were documents sent to Na uh, NATO and Washington laying out what Russia's concerns were with having basically you know, an active war directed at Russia uh, conducted on its uh, border. And uh, that was rejected. There were the Minsk uh, agreements that were negotiated and and signed over the uh, period of you know from post coup in 2014. Uh, that also, we found out not only were they not implemented, everyone knew that because the Donbass area was not uh, given autonomy, which was the consideration for it. But also that uh, the individuals from the West who negotiated it admitted publicly, we never intended to uh, carry our part of the bargain. We were just trying to buy time to arm for a war with Russia. So the foundation for this is on pretty shaky ground. Obviously, the logic of any war is that it should be ended through negotiations that are fair and settle the underlying problems between the belligerents or the antagonists. Uh, it just doesn't seem that there's anyone that can do that on behalf of Kiev, since Kiev really is nothing but you know, an agent of Washington, and Washington is trying to damage Russia. Greg Simons, I want to get your thoughts on the issue as well, whether this uh, draft new um, draft um, agreement will lead anywhere, and whether you agree with our guest, Mr. Don DeBar, that uh, maybe Kiev isn't even actually looking for peace. Well, I agree fully with Don. Uh, I, I would also add the moment that Zelensky agreed uh, to go to war against Russia, uh, Ukraine lost all its sovereignty. It became nothing more than a puppet of the United States and a, a very desperate and delusional United States that has banked everything on Ukraine winning the war so that it can uh, sort of stop Russia's rise. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I would also add 
that, I mean, the, the point is Ukraine is in a much worse military, political, economic position now uh, in 2024, in April 2024, than it was uh, in March uh, 2022 in Istanbul. So, I mean, what do they have to bargain with? I mean, they're now trying to scrape the bottom of the barrel for anyone who hasn't run away from conscription or is dead yet. Sure. Uh, Don DeBar, let's uh, talk about uh, the, uh, not just the issue of peace, but what's the end game for this, specifically uh, for, uh, for Europe? Because uh, uh, with well, the United States is far away, whatever is uh, taking place, uh, it is uh, on the European continent. Uh, and uh, so break that down uh, for us uh, as in terms of what the end game uh, of all of this could be. You know, the traditional geopolitical view of these things uh, just th doesn't seem to work. If you're considering uh, the individual European countries or the EU slash uh, segment of NATO, as independent actors. Uh, you know, the reality is that the Germany, Italy, uh, fr France, th these countries are still, I don't think France is anymore, but these countries are still under military occupation of the United States. Um, you know, and have been since 1945, which is something, by the way, uh, that was, you know, also a, a parallel development as, in terms of settlement of World War II with Eastern Europe, with the Soviet Union, who walked away from their occupations and brought their troops home. The U.S. still remains there. So as Europe behaves in this model, they're doing so literally as an extension of the U.S. military. Um, the U.S. policy has been clear since 1917 at least, um, and it was articulated, although not on behalf of the U.S., but the policy itself was articulated by Adolf Hitler when he wrote Mein Kampf in 1922 or whatever, looking at... Uh, uh, Russia basically as you know what's left of planet Earth resources and you know land and territory and they want it and the problem for the people who consider themselves the masters of the world or universe or whatever the delusion carries is that the people that live in Russia intend to keep their country and they have a viable state that they support we saw in the last election 80 something percent of the people supporting the president that currently sits in, in Russia um, and uh, they have a viable military deterrent, um, and they have demonstrated over history that, that they will not allow people to come in and take over. And so, you know, we're looking at a situation where unless the United States changes its goals, you know, I don't think what happens in Europe is that important unless there's an actual revolution or revolt there and, and they kick the U.S. military out. Um, unless that happens, then either the U.S. is going to have to change its goal of trying to take down the Russian state and take over the Russian landmass, uh, or um, there's going to be a major war. Mr. Simon, same question to you. If uh, hopes uh, for peace, uh, at least uh, in the near future, are dim, then what is uh, the end game uh, for all parties involved? Well, I mean, as has been noted, Europe is not a party, uh, nor is Ukraine. I mean, neither have a will or a brain of their own. They've got an inner slave mentality to the US. The ones that matter are the US, which is playing a suicidal game going with this unpopular war into a presidential election. Uh, one would have thought that, I mean, th this ego uh, is getting in the way of an election, uh, which is not going to be good for the Democrats, but. They don't obviously want to keep in power, but the, the one that is now calling the shots is Russia. Uh, it's winning politically, militarily, economically. It's the largest economy in Europe now. Uh, so they're calling the shots and, and they've articulated what their end game is. Uh, Ukrainian neutrality, what is left of it. Uh, and this denazification of the country uh, and these you know, specific points which have been articulated directly uh, by Putin and the Russian government. All right, thanks a lot, gentlemen, radio host and journalist at CPR News, Don DeBar.
joining us from Austin in New York, and uh, independent researcher and author Greg Simons joining us from Uppsala, Sweden. And with that, it brings us to an end here on this edition of uh, the News Review.